Within the economic characteristics of airlines, this short video introduces passenger load factor. Load factor measures how full the aircraft is, how many seats are being taken. If we look at the formula of the factor, we divided passengers multiplied by distance, which is RPK, divided by seats multiplied by the distance. Normally, this is multiplied by 100 in order to give it as a percentage. And I cannot have more passengers than seats, so the maximum uh, load factor is going to be 100 when all the seats are being taken. If we take Again, the example from Ankara in Turkey to Istanbul, we have the Airbus 320 with 120 and, sorry, 150 seats available. We have 125 passengers traveling, which means uh, 125 revenue passengers. Multiplied by the distance, we get RPK, revenue passengers kilometers, and we get ASK, available seat kilometers, which are the two things I need to calculate log factor. You might say, well, why are you multiplying by distance if uh, I have the same on the numerator and the denominator, so it can be a way. This is true, but for this case, because we have one single flight or one single route. When you aggregate different flights from different routes in order to calculate the load factor of one month for an airline, for instance, then you have to take into account those distance for each uh, flight. And in this case, we calculate the load factor of 83.3%, which is a reasonable a good factor. In order to have a perspective whether this level is very high, low compared to the industry, we can look at history of load factors. So in the last four years, four years ago, the levels of load factors were around 50%. So then, uh, on average, aircraft were half empty or half full. But those levels of load factor has been increases uh, within the last 40 years. And here and now, we reach uh, much higher uh, load factors, around 80% or more on average. Although load factor has been increased in the past history, if we look at a shorter period of time, we see times in which load factor decreases. One example is the period between 2008 to 2010, in which we had like a world crisis. So crisis means that the economy goes down, less people uh, travel for business, people have less money, and even less people travel for tourism as well. So then. Uh, it means that log factor is something which is uh, affected very much when uh, a crisis uh, appears. Other things that could influence a log factor could be the day of the week, which is uh, the flight, or even the time of the day of the flight. If we look at this graph, we see that depending on the day of the, of the month, in this case, a uh, log factor is higher or lower. So why is because the demand of those flights is different. For instance, if we take a business uh, route, let's say in Turkey between Istanbul and Ankara, where there are many business people traveling, it's likely that there is more demand during weekdays. So then lot factor is expected to be higher during the weekdays than the weekend. If we get a lesser route, which is uh, going to uh, Barcelona for tourism, then it's likely that those flights during week weekends are going to be more full. But also the time of the day. I mean, if we come back again to those business route, our uh, Istanbul Ankara, and we compare two hours of the day, it's going to be likely that those flights early morning are going to be more full than those flights at noon, let's say. So we see that the day of the week, even the time of the day, is going to have an influence. And that's what companies do to try to adjust the flights in order to, uh, to keep the load factor as high as possible. 
But on, play, on top of playing with those days or time of the day, what other things airlines can do in order to increase load factor? Well, one thing which comes to my mind is to decrease prices. So if I put cheaper prices on my flight, there are more people willing to buy the ticket. So load factor increases. But I have to be careful because if I lower the price too much, I might end up having my aircraft full, but still I don't make a profit. So I have to always find a balance between the load factor and how much I get for each passenger. What is the average ticket price? Other way to increase load factor is to uh, change the capacity. We saw that different days of the week, different times have different demand. So if I have the flexibility to change the aircraft type, for instance, so one bigger or a smaller aircraft, by changing the capacity, I might be able to increase load factor. And another way is to, to let people know that I am flying somewhere. So I can do that through promotion, online, offline, uh, TV, uh, and so on. So just by promoting one flight, I am making people more aware to the probability to more people uh, buy the ticket and therefore higher uh, load factor. So we call to promotion. So what is the impact of load factor on profit? First, just summarize the uh, definition of profit. Profit is the uh, revenue minus cost, that's the profit, or loss if the cost is greater than the revenue. So load factor in general is positive. So uh, airlines want to be the aircraft as full as possible. But, as I mentioned before, it's not only to have high load factor, but it's to have as much as high uh, average price for each ticket. So if I get a good balance of high load factor with high average price, most likely I will be doing a profit. So again, as a summary, we can say that load factor is how what is the percentage of seats being occupied? And I calculated as load factor equals to revenue passengers times kilometers over available seats times kilometer. The reason of uh, multiplying by kilometers is to give more weight to those flights which take longer. Let's say to fly from Istanbul to New York takes much longer to fly from Istanbul to Ankara. So this distance kilometers takes that into account. And then airlines will like to maximize load factor at the same time as maximize the ticket price of each passenger with the aim to be profitable. Thank you very much.